Replacing your tool changer shuttle in and out motor. This video is about how to do it and I'm gonna talk about the issues that may lead up to you suspecting you have a bad motor or switches or anything else about it. To replace the motor, you're gonna need to reach inside your machine and push the clutch arm down to get it forward to get to the four bolts that hold the motor into the clutch arm, which then pushes the shuttle forward. I'm the CNC repairman. Are you the belt? I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls pull off. So, if I was outside of the machine, I'd reach inside through the window, or on larger machines, you can climb up on top, and you can push straight down with a big screwdriver or a crowbar, this clutch arm down, and then, once I get it down a little bit, I can come from this side and push it. Once I get it down, you can then push. This motor is a geared motor, so I'm running the whole gearbox and I'm sliding the shuttle in and opening the door. Ooh. So I just pushed it in. Now we've got a pretty good view. Here's the tool changer roller switch. It was really sticky to begin with. If you're having tool changer shuttle in, shuttle out faults, these switches I would replace first. They're cheaper than a motor and they usually wear out first. This is the clutch arm right here and it rolls up and hits the switch when it's back, hits the switch when it's forward. This arm can move back and forth and it's on a set screw and if it's not adjusted correctly. When it swings back, it will miss the switch. So let's see, I'll push it back. Let's see here. That should be just about all the way there. And so a little bit further, the arm is, the shuttle or clutch arm is not all the way up. I'm gonna get this crowbar in here and I'm just gonna push, there it's going up. And it just hit the switch. So now it's back. There's a set screw on the clutch arm that screws into the shaft. Now what's interesting is when I took this old motor off of this machine, which was smoking, I didn't want to burn up the I.O. board, somebody has drilled a hole through here. What usually happens in the field is that the motor starts to slip or the clutch arm slips and the set screw that holds the whole clutch on the shaft and the key is slipping or loosened and backed off. I have a number of times at places re-drilled the hole in the shaft. I've never drilled it all the way through. It was a real pain to get that motor off of here. So you might find some interesting things on your machine. The starting of replacing the motor is to get the shuttle arm forward, take the sheet metal cover off, remove the four screws, and remove the set screw in the shaft. So Allen wrenches, a crowbar, a 3 16 stubby, or socket that you can, driver that you can put on a ratchet. Let's, let's get going, we'll get right to it. Whoa. I'm gonna push this down from the top because it's easier to get it around. Now I'm going to push this guy forward. until I get access to the bolts and I can see here's where somebody right on the top is where the set screw is that holds it on the shaft and I could come in and unthread that set screw then the motor would pull right out and from the front there's a cam follower bearing that moves this whole box back and forth. These bolts are sometimes really tight. I have broken a bit right off Trying to loosen them up. Oh, so that one's actually 5.30 seconds. This is kind of cheating because I already have a new motor. It's when the motors have been on a machine for 25 years, the bolts are usually a little bit rusted and seized. You have to hit the bolt head 
like with a hammer, you can see that's pretty rusted and corroded. It makes it just hard to take things apart. So loosen up that one. So I've got it loose. There's another bolt on the bottom here. I'm gonna push the arm a little bit forward. Okay, and I can just barely reach this. Aaron from the future, pull the sheet metal cover off so that you can disconnect the plug for the motor, pull the plug out, it's a little tight, so that when you disconnect the motor and set it down, you're not straining the cable. I forgot about that, I got distracted. So pull that before you start. There's four screws around the motor. I could push this a little bit more forward to give me more room, but it's quite difficult to push. You want the crowbar to give you that leverage to push up. There we go, there we go. Okay, it hit its stop. Come around to the front here. We can see the clutch arm. There's a cam follower bearing inside of here that runs in a slot behind this motor. And as the motor turns, it moves the clutch arm, which rolls the bearing in that slot and brings the whole shuttle forward like this, and then the whole shuttle back. And it's pretty easy when it's in this motion and it's already moving, but when you get towards the top, it's really hard to push to give you that extra little bit of clearance to reach inside here and get the last bolt. And I'm gonna hold the motor up on the back. And you can see I'm, I'm wiggling the entire thing. There is a key on this. So be careful if your machine was full of chips, you don't wanna lose the key. There we go, I, pu I pulled the motor back, which gave me a little bit more access with the ball end of the Allen wrench. Okay, got it out. I got the sheet metal cover off, unplugged the motor. You will have already done that. Now with the motor, four bolts disconnected, the set screw out of the key shaft, the motor can just come right off. You can set it down. Now the new motor is gonna show up from CNC replacement parts, if you need a motor, give us a call. It's gonna show up, you're gonna put the key in the shaft, you're gonna come back here, slide it in, you're gonna have to monkey with the clutch shaft and be sure that the motor, you can put a crescent wrench on here and turn this, or the other thing that I've done is if it's the wrong keyway, once you shove it in there, you can just manually turn the motor. Lift this up, see how easily it slides now. Oops, because there's no motor attached. This is up out of the way. Line up the shaft. So like right now, I'm gonna then turn the motor and I could listen closely. Do you hear that? Actually, we just, just go full 180. So if yours isn't lining up, just spin this. Then that hole is where you're gonna run in your set screw onto the shaft and the position of this is critical so that it lines up with the switch when it's in the forward. And I can just spin this and it nicely comes back. And now it's gonna spin the motor. Oh, that's a full tool change. And it's gonna line right up, but I got the motor crooked, so let's spin it forward. This cable would normally be out of the way because it's held down via the sheet metal. Screw this in. Once you get it started, it'll kind of hold itself. Now we're gonna put another screw in, turn the motor just a little bit. And I dropped a screw. Gonna get that one. Gonna just hold this up a little. Okay, the last screw to get is the hard one. It's behind the clutch plate, which means you're gonna have to push the clutch arm down. It's all now connected. Let's get rid of this old motor. Come 
come around. I want to show you from the front. We've got a set screw hole here, but you can see the shaft with the key. That set screw is going to sit right on that key shaft, and it's going to be a little different when this is pushed all the way in. And then these switches on the clutch arm, it's very difficult to see because the clutch arm rolls back up and hits the switch, then it rolls up and hits the next switch. So this can move and you need to adjust it correctly after you've tightened the bolts so that it hits the switch and hits the switch. That last screw, the tricky one, that's behind, there's one, two, three, four. That's the hard one to get because you have to have this all the way back and then get in there with a little stubby Allen wrench and it was missing on my machine. If it's missing on your machine, tighten the other three. You'd probably be fine. I'm gonna pull it back. And now I could get access to it, but I'd have to have a really ground flat stubby Allen wrench to get that last one in there. When this is completed, you're gonna plug the wires in through the hole on the metal bracket, then put the sheet metal on, power your machine on and try a tool change. I'd recommend a tool change with no tools. Make sure it goes forward and it goes back. All the switches correctly work. Another plug for us, if you need any parts for your machines, if you need to fix your machines, watch our other videos. I'm gonna button this back up so that we can continue to make videos with this machine and I'll let you go back to fixing your machine.